think outside the squares. Now then, how does that fit to your preparedness? I already showed you how it fit to your preparedness. This is clothing because it makes my survival clothing if I need it. When I'm in a tough situation, this is clothing. This is outside the squares. That's why we have to think like that. So let's talk about getting prepared using things that maybe we don't think of them as being what they look like they are, but they do something else. And I really call this preparedness on a shoestring in some cases. See, one of the issues that people have is how can I afford to get all of this stuff? Guess what? You already have a bunch of it. So don't get the things you already got. But figure out the things that you don't have, that you must have, put your time, energy, money in acquiring those things. Some of them you may have to, in fact, buy. There's many things that you can build. So let's look at a couple of things here. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Since we said that water is such a critically important thing, then having water and water storage is very, very important. Now, guess what? Parachute number two, we will talk about in class number three, and that's water. And we'll spend a great deal of time on water. Even in those two hours, I don't have enough time to cover everything, but I will give you the basic principles about that that are very important. But if you wanted to learn how to purify water, you can buy some wonderful filters. And if you have the money to do that, please do it. Just go buy them. If you can afford to buy certain things, buy those things that you can so that you have time to work on other things. But suppose you say, boy, I would really like to have one of those $800 Catadyne Expedition filters. But $800 is a lot of money. You can make things that will substitute quite well. We'll talk about that. One of the things that you can do is learn to use things like iodine. And you learn to use charcoal. Here I have just some charcoal, simple charcoal. You can get it. It's used in fish tanks and it's used in gardens. You can make your own charcoal. Charcoal is a wonderful material. Using iodine, charcoal, and some coffee filters and a plastic tube, I can make a water filter. It'll cost me just a few dollars that can save my life. So you can learn to do that. I'll also show you how to make, using some components that are out there, make an even higher quality water filter than that. So learn how and why things work. Make some of your own stuff you can do. So you have water filters that you can put together. We'll talk about that next week. Now here's something that's very interesting. A lot of people think, well, suppose I need some kind of a portable shelter. And having a tent is a wonderful thing to do. But if you're going to have a quality tent, a good quality two-man tent is going to cost you somewhere between $300 and $600. And a $39.95 tent is not worth the matches to set it on fire to burn it down. You're going to have to spend some money on quality if you want a tent. You say, oh, golly, let's see, I need six of those things for my family at $300 a piece. And it's like, yeah. uh, no, you don't need a tent. You can use, instead of using a tent for just about every situation you can think of, here's a plastic sheet, Visqueen. It's four mils thick. 12 foot by 12 foot construction plastic. You can camp above the Arctic Circle wrapped on a plastic sheet, your sleeping bag, because I've done that. You can do it in the deserts. You can do it in the mountains here. You can go through terrific rainstorms. I'll tell you one place that you don't camp very well on a plastic sheet, and that's in a swamp. But I don't do swamp camping, so I'm okay. And the only thing that I really want a tent for is if I'm in a situation, I'd like, it doesn't have to be a tent as in a weather tent, but I really would like to have mosquito netting, critter netting, if I'm in an area where there's lots of biting flies and mosquitoes. Other than that, you don't need a tent. And you don't have to buy an expensive tent to take care of that. That's just netting to keep the things away from you. Well, let's look at a couple of other things here that you can do. Oh, here's another one of the, there's some wonderful water filters out there that you can buy. These are little portable ones. And you can have some of those kinds of things, but you can make substitutes for them if you'll learn how to use the substitute. Now, the thing about low-cost substitutes is sometimes it takes more intelligence and more experience to make them more. Not intelligence. It takes more skill. It takes more understanding. It's not intelligence. You just need to learn how to make it work. So you'll have to put in the time to learn those things. Well, uh, suppose that you wanted to have... Here, here's a very nice wind, rain, sleet garment. I designed it. I like it. It's kind of a neat little thing. Uh, and this is actually still being manufactured in one form or another that's going to the Navy SEALs. They're using a takeoff on this of something we designed a number of years ago. Costs about $120 a piece. Well, that's a lot of money. Okay. 
Let me show you what you can make. See this little thing right here? Now, this is not as nice, and it certainly isn't as durable, but I can make 500 of these for the cost of one of these. Big plastic bag, garbage bag, with a slit cut in for the sleeves right here, and a hood made out of, guess what, a free grocery sack. And in this case, it has, and you say, well, maybe I want to I'll put it on in a minute, but it really destroys the sound on the mic when you put it on. But here I have, I need a closure around here. So I made some rope out of, guess what, another plastic bag. And here's a little piece of wood that I use my pocket knife to shape. And a little bit of tape. And then I have some closures over here. And here I have a very acceptable rain wind garment. Hood, buttons, closure and all, and you say, what about your arms? Well, you can make something plastic there, or if you don't want to go that far, what do you do? Just tuck them inside. Now they're out of the rain. See how it works? What'd this cost me? A dime, maybe, and a little bit of time. Plastic bag will save your life. Learn how to use one. It might be very nice to have, let's say that you wanted to be portable and mobile. It might be very nice to have one of these really nice little nesting pots and they're stainless steel and they have all these little gidgets and things there. You say, that's really cool. I don't know, you can have one for $45. Well, that's kind of expensive. Guess what? I can get a one gallon can for free or some of my food storage comes in that. And I can get myself a simple little pressed steel skillet Cost you three or four dollars, not cast iron, steel. I got a pocket knife so I can make a spatula. And, and, and a roll of aluminum foil. Guess what? When I add this in there, and then I have a pair of pliers, so I have a tool to handle it with. And my knife. I can cook any food that you can think of. I, I did a lot of things, you know, with scouts and youth groups and people like that. And one time I was taking one of these extended 10-day trips, and I was talking about the fact that using a tin can, a pressed steel skillet, a roll of aluminum foil, my pocket knife and pliers, that I can make any food. And somebody says, well, make a cake. Oh, that's easy. There's nothing to that. Well, make a cobbler. Do that all the time. And one of these says, make a pizza. And I went, oh, my heck, I've never done that one before. But I understood how this stuff worked. And so what I did was... I said, okay, I'll tell you what, guys, there was about 30 of these little scouts. You know, what, what's a 12-year-old, 13-year-old kid want more than anything? Pizza. I says, I'll tell you what, I'll take the challenge. I'm going to take the mix-up pizza thing. You know, the dough you can buy like that, and you got the sauce that's in a can, and you bring some olives and all. I took all the ingredients. I said, I'll carry it. tell you what, I'm going to carry this on this trip. We were on a 10-day trip. I'm going to carry it for five or six days. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to make pizza. And if I successfully make pizza... I'm going to eat it in front of you. And they said, yeah, you'll never do it. Yeah, yeah. And I said, cool. By golly, I ate pizza in front of those guys. And they were like, <sighs> they wanted pizza. So I, didn't, I didn't give them any of it. I carried it. Nobody carried that stuff. I carried it all the way up there. And it was heavy when you take things like that. So I ate it. I'm not cruel. They know how to make pizza and nothing but aluminum foil. So if you'll get a little bit of skill and a little bit of understanding, you can do all kinds of fun things. You don't have to spend money for everything. A lot of things can be very low in cost, but you will have to learn. Now, there's some wonderful tools out there. By the way, when I'm talking about things, I'm really not trying to pick on something. I don't want to slam something and say it's no good. There's wonderful tools. There's some of these little fold-up multi-tools. They're fun, like this one. Now, I'm an engineer, remember, so I like the way this thing snaps out. I think that's really cool, right? Boy, you can pop that thing out there. i got pliers and cutters, and there's blades in the handle and all kinds of things like that. They'll, these used to cost a lot more than they do now. This was, I think, about $70 when I bought it. You can get them for around $45 right now. But $45 is a lot of money. So what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what. If I have my pocket knife and for $6 to $8 I had one of these things with it, I can do 90% of what this will do better. Because you already have to have the knife, just add the pliers to it.
and you do most of what this does right here. So again, don't think about you have to have all these neat little things. Now, by the way, if you have the money to get it after you've done the other things, hey, they're fun. Go ahead and get them. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't think you're limited if you don't have one of those things. Now then, there's other things. I might even get real cheap about a couple of things. Where, okay, suppose you wanted to have a match container. They're free. See the little soda bottle, the plastic soda bottle? It'll take a whole box of matches in it, and it's more water. You get those little tubes, and they only get nine matches in the silly thing. You've got to have 35 of them to put up a box. You get one of these things, put a whole box in there. And this you were going to throw away. You say, where do you strike it? Well, I put some emery cloth on the side with double sticky tape. Or if I was using a larger bottle, sometimes I lose things. Take, a, take like a pill bottle, like a, like a vitamin bottle. It has a big cap on it. You put the scratching surface underneath in that. You can put it in there. Works well on the outside just like this. So you see, there's things that are free. Now, it'd be nice to have one of those nice camp axes. Suppose you wanted to be mobile. That, 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 that east wing axe, wonderful axe. You know, $35, $40, whatever it is. But you don't need axe. If you're thinking about axe for getting wood for fire, what do you need? A pair of gloves, a pair of boots. I can stomp more wood with my boots and my gloves in a half hour than you can chop with an axe all day. Now an axe is very useful for shaping wood if you want to make something, but for gathering firewood, an axe is not that great, unless the only thing you have. Now, I'll tell you where you'd like to have a, 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 an axe is if you're camping on a beach, a northern beach, and they got nothing but logs up there, you'd really kind of like to have an axe for that. Most people don't camp on the Arctic coastline where they got big logs and not much little wood. So I don't think you have to worry about that too much. Uh, you might even be so, uh, so frugal in saving money because you can go buy some of these nice straps and they'll cost you 2 or $3 a piece. Just learn how to tie some cord and it'll do the same job. So you can take it right down to the most minute little things. You see, here's a water bottle. You can go buy a water bottle, and they'll charge you money for one of these. Here's a free soda bottle that's going to be thrown away. Every time you get a piece of luggage, they've got one of these straps on them, right, that you never use. Save all the straps. And now what did I do? I used a little bit of cord on here, and I made a, a hook on it, and I got a water bottle canteen on there. What did it cost me? Nothing. This was all throwaway stuff. You can find it in the garbage, or you were going to throw it away. So you can save money on lots of little things. If you'll just think about it and learn a little bit of skill that will allow you. See, it's difficult to make a pocket knife. I made a pocket knife once, an all stainless steel pocket knife. Even the sides, on everything was solid stainless steel. I lost the thing. That really bummed me out. But I made a pocket knife once. It's a lot of work to make a pocket knife, and I don't have the right tools to make one. I need to buy one. So I'm going to spend my $35 or $40 to buy a good pocket knife. And if I need to, I'll save it in all these other little areas here. Buy the things you must buy. All right. Here's some rules of low cost. Low cost sometimes, many times, can, will, can work as well or better than the high cost, high tech, spend money equivalent. Low cost sometimes requires more knowledge, understanding, and skill. Sometimes it does. Low cost often requires more tolerance and patience to deal with it. You know, that plastic bag poncho is not quite as nice as this does right here. I have to have a little more patience and a little more tolerance to deal with it. This is $120. That's 10 cents. I can tolerate that if I need to spend my money elsewhere. Low cost un requires that you understand your the actual practical performance of what you're trying to do. You need to know what it is that you're wanting to accomplish. So what I want to give you is the hope that you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money in all areas. There are certain things you're just going to have to buy. Save the money. Do what you have to do. Buy the things you must buy. The rest of the things, make them yourself if you need to. So here's the laws. Here's the principles. Here's the concepts. Let's go back to the beginning just a little bit as we're getting close to wrapping up here. If you will learn and live the laws of true preparedness, you can make it no matter what. Do you understand that concept? I'm here to tell you, you can make it no matter what happens. If you learn and live the laws, if you prepare yourself, if you have the parachutes, do those things. To me, that's a very hopeful message. It says, I can, in fact, control the outcome that I may find myself in. 
What are those laws that we talked about? The first law is what? The law of provident living. The law of provident living had what? Four parts to it. Number one was what? Spiritual. Number two was what? Attitude. Number three was? Knowledge. And number four? Yeah, you got the word stuff. I like to use the word stuff. Okay, that's the law of provident living, and that's the order of priority for them. The second law that we talked about was what? The law of freedom. What was the law of freedom? The law of freedom said first what? Well, let's understand the things that imprison us, that put us in bondage. One of those things is fear. Fear is a life-controlling kind of thing. So what's the definition of fear? Fear is ignorance. You're right. That's it. Ignorance. So what it means is that you can overcome anything that you're afraid of by getting what? Knowledge. Brings us kind of back to what we were talking about on the first law of provident living. Okay? Now then, okay, so the definition of fear is ignorance. What did I say about freedom? What's the description of freedom? Do you remember, the, remember those power words that I said? It is impossible to fear anything for what you have true and complete knowledge. That's a true statement. I believe that. The nicest way of saying it, the most eloquent way of saying it is what? And the truth shall make you free. That's the beautiful way of saying that. If you will get true, correct, and proper knowledge, you are free to do amazing things in life. All right? The law of outcome simply said what? If I know where I want to go, and if I make the commitment to get there, I understand what it is that I face, I can control my outcome. That's all that it says. The first law of survival was what? Luck, which we define as when preparedness and opportunity cross. That's right. Or as an acronym, laboring under correct knowledge. That's what luck is. You create your own luck. The second law of survival was what? It was what? CPR. What does CPR stand for? Courage, patience, and resourcefulness. You must possess those things in order to make it in tough situations. In this quick review we're doing of the principles that you must understand, remember the law of stuff, the material things, is about wilderness wisdom. And wilderness wisdom consists of two categories of things. The first category simply being the survival parachutes that has in it clothing, water, sanitation, and then the special needs. And then the long-term or the permanent provisions also has clothing, water, sanitation, but then you must bring in nutrition after a period of time, you need some shelter, have a whole area of wellness, and then you've got tools and supplies. That's the material things that you need, both short-term and long-term. If you will understand and live those things and figure out what it takes for you to make them operative in your life, I'm here to tell you, you can make it no matter what. So long as you have breath, you will be okay. But here's the last little thing I want to add to that. You can also be filled with joy every moment of your life. I believe that. Let me read something for you. This is something I wrote a number of years ago, and it's how I finish off and conclude surviving against all odds. Listen to these words, please, and see if they don't really, really fit what we've been talking about. Well-being is yours to determine. It is created as a moment-by-moment -moment reflection of your attitudes, beliefs, and dreams. Flying across the deserts of this country are both hummingbirds and vultures. The hummingbird is searching for a colorful and fragrant flower from which to sip its meal of sweet nectar. The vulture is looking for a rotting carcass from which to rip its dinner of smelly flesh. The hummingbird and the vulture each find exactly what they are looking for. We too are like the hummingbird and the vulture. In life, day by day, we find exactly what we are looking for. It is all a matter of the intent, purpose, and need which fills our life. However, there is a fundamental difference with us. The course of the hummingbird and the vulture is unchangeably set, wherein there is neither thought, intent, or need to search for anything different. 
Thus, they both perfectly fulfill the measure of their creation and find joy in it. We, on the other hand, have the agency in charge to choose what fills our lives. The intent, purpose, and need of our lives is ours to determine. Thus, each of us holds the keys to fulfilling the true measure of our creation and finding joy in our lives. May we develop the courage to create joy in our lives each moment, no matter what the circumstances at the time. May we also develop a climate for the same and those over whom we have stewardship. I promise you, this is how it works in life. You and I, we have the choice what fills our lives. We must be active, proactive, involved in doing the things that make it better for us and people around us. Preparedness is an active thing. It's a positive thing. It's an uplifting thing. By taking action now, when the time comes for you to prove what you've done, who you are, what you stand for, you can be ready for that time, and you can, in fact, be filled with joy in the process, no matter how tough things may be. I believe it will be very important for you to do that because there are people around you who may not be understanding these things and involved in doing them. And you need to be there to lift them, to be an encourager, to help them. I believe that is a part of our responsibility and stewardship. So to me, preparedness is something that I do for myself, for my family, and for those around me whom I love, whom I respect, and people that I have not even met yet. My interest is to help as many people as possible here in my own community and across this country, which really is my community, and ultimately maybe even on a larger scale. As many people as possible be prepared for a future, not just in a physical sense, but in a mental, emotional, and spiritual way. That's my hope, and I invite you and each one of you to get involved also in a positive way, in an uplifting way, to touch and help as many people as you possibly can. May we do that with commitment and be fulfilled in the process of having made a difference is my hope and is my prayer. Thanks very much for a time to visit with you. Have a good evening. Okay, where do you go from here? Well, first, let me give you my 21-word lecture on success. And in this case, we want to be successful in becoming prepared and becoming a self-reliant family. Do the best you can with what you have from where you are, all in total integrity, and do it now. All right, that, that's a nice group of words, but specifically, do what? Okay, let's go back to the beginning of this program. The first principle that I shared with you, provident living. Four items in it. Number one, spiritual. Number two, attitude. Three, knowledge. And four, stuff. And don't you see that it's correct knowledge that makes all the difference in these areas? The quest, therefore, is for true understanding. Our message and purpose is nothing but totally positive in nature. If you are warned and forewarned, be prepared. You can take personal responsibility be self-reliant. Make provisions for the future. Be safe. Face your future without fear because you have made provisions for all eventualities. You will be able to assist others. Be a helping hand. Self-reliance is a process, not a destination. It's more an attitude than just ownership of things. A positive outlook, not negative and fearful. It's future focused not past problem counting, and it's helpful to others not living in isolation. You see, in facing the future, each one of us must choose the attitude and stance to take. Uh, here's my list. You can become a pacifist, which is, well, just come right in and take whatever you want. You can be the survivalist, that's the raw snake-eating mountain man tough guy. You can be the ignoringist, well, nothing really bad is going to happen. You can be the isolationist. Look, I'll take care of me and my own, and what you do and what you don't do, that's your business. Leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. You can feel entitled. Well, you know, the, the system, it's here to take care of me, and after all, I deserve it because, and you can list all the reasons why you think somebody else should take care of you, or 
you become a self-reliant family interdependent within a self-reliant community. Here's the truth about life. There is no doubt that tomorrow will come and there's no dispute that things happen. But how you're prepared to meet the future will make all the difference in the world. If you are prepared for the worst, then no matter what happens, it will be an adventure. Specifically, here's what you do. Either you join or you develop your own program that is based on principles, not price and profits. A program that is part of a system which guides you through the process. A program that is unified and synergistic where everything works together. And a program that is flexible and expandable so you can start where you are and build to a desired conclusion. I invite you to join with me and the Family Works programs to first become a self-reliant family and then become part of self-reliant communities all across this country.